Welcome into another edition of Bringing Home the Gold as we talk with the state champion Coldwater Cavalier football team. I'm Mark Kearns, joined by C.J. Seibert, a linebacker, special teamer for the Cavaliers, head coach Chip Otten, another linebacker and special teamer, Jake Schmidt on the end. And coach, three straight state titles, six straight trips to the state championship game. Does it ever get old? Uh, it doesn't really because it's new, new guys every year, or new seniors anyway. And then uh, some of these guys have been, played a lot of football for us. And uh, but it doesn't, you know, because because once you get that taste of, of winning, you know, you don't like to go back. You don't like to go back the other way, and and um, it's just fun. It's just fun to to you know you get, get those get those extra weeks with them. We call it bonus pay when we get in the playoffs, and and uh, so it's it, it it'll never get old. Yeah, Jake, it's what like four or five straight classes now to have played sixty games. That's a lot of extra football. Do you look at that as a bonus, or like Coach says, or is that more of a of a burden from the players' perspective? To get beat up in practice for five more weeks. Oh no, uh, it's definitely a bonus. Um, I think all the players cherish every every week of practice we can get, and uh, I also would attribute it to a lot of our success those extra weeks of practice. CJ. When you were a, a youngster in this program, does those, do those extra weeks pay off even more so when you're younger and you can get more practice and kind of that's how that tradition kind of builds into itself? Yeah, for sure. When you're a freshman or a sophomore, you have five extra weeks to practice more than like everyone else does. So you have five extra weeks to just go off on your own and work on your stuff. Coach, three MAC teams win state titles this year. I mean, you, you, we're talking about an SEC level of dominance for the MAC right now, you hear the SEC chance in college football. You hear the MAC chance in high school football. How much pride does Coldwater and Marin Local take for what Minster did and what Marin Local did? Oh, there, there, there's a lot of uh, support there. Uh, you know, I, we we're just talking with uh, Coach Stokes from Minster. Um, we just caught about the last five minutes of their game because we just got off practice and we're going to our uh, team meal, and uh, so so we were in the school and we had it on TV in there. And, and they got the onside kick, and all our players just went, you know, like, all right, come on, let's do it, fellas. And uh, there, is, <coughs> there is a lot of pride um, in, in helping each other and, um, or cheering for each other. And uh, there's a good, good respect, I think, with the, with the league teams and good sportsmanship. And, and uh, it's just fun. It just, it's validation that, um, you know, the, the, the communities, the, the tight-knit communities, the, 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 um, the guys are all – growing up with their with their buddies and playing with their buddies and so we're all very similar in a lot of ways um, they get to know each other they go off to college together and room together and uh, so it's there, there's a lot of pride there and, and uh, the expectations are high and we, we would like to keep them there Jake unlike Minster Coldwater didn't really have a whole lot of close games particularly in their playoff run running clock became almost a normal thing for you guys in this playoff run when you get to that level of dominance how do you keep you got how do you keep on that fine edge week after week. Um, I think I think personally, uh, you know, you you you, you kind of miss the close games, and uh, uh, but you know, it's it's always good to dominate uh, dominate a game and get up like that. Um, it's probably good for coaches' uh, blood pressure too. So, <laughs> <laughs> coach, were, were you relieved not to see Bishop Hartley again in the state title game? You know, part of us, part of us was, and and, and 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 part of us wasn't. I think because because their style, their style of play is 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 not probably as conducive as it is to a, to a wider open game. Because we're not really very big. You know, you see our guys, you know, like, man, how are we going? How are we going to handle these these guys? But and and, and uh, you know, you you beat someone three times. It's like let's let's play somebody else, somebody who doesn't know us. Uh, we don't we don't know them quite as well. But but. Um, I think we probably felt <coughs> relieved more than, than, than wanting to play him again. CJ, you guys made this look easy, but it wasn't easy. You guys had had overcome a lot of injuries throughout the year. Do, do people take for granted the success, the fans take for granted the success Coldwater has? Because, I mean, Mitch Fullenkamp wasn't there all the time. Brody wasn't, Hoing wasn't there all the time. Yet you guys didn't look like you guys missed a beat at all. Um, no, I don't think they really take it for granted. Everyone's there supporting us through the whole way, and they're here for us. and. Uh, it just keeps it exciting. Now, one thing that was different this year for you guys, playing in Ohio Stadium as opposed to, to playing in Maslin, how was that different? What was it like to, to be on that big horseshoe as opposed to being at Paul Brown Stadium? It was incredible. Like, you walk out of the tunnel and just, it was breathtaking. I love it. Like, just, you like dream about it now. It's amazing. Never have that opportunity again, so. 
Coach, the experience in Columbus as opposed to the experience in Maslin, I, I'm not going to ask you which one was better, but clearly they're different. What was it like f from the coach's perspective? Yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, I, I, my first initial thought was I'd rather play in a high school stadium. Um, but once we got there, um, you know, they did a really good job in Columbus taking care of us. Um, I think the night the night game was awesome. You know, again, we didn't really want to play that late game cause just because, I don't know, you're battling. The, it's a Saturday night. You're battling the, uh, the um, Ohio State game. But like CJ said, when you go out there and the, the light, the lights, um, I guess it made it so 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 cool because it was so bright and the, the uh, strips around the halfway through the stadium, all those advertising things and mm -hmm. the lights change and and um, so so it was really 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 pretty cool, um, really. Uh, and the crowd was better than what we maybe expected and so it was a, it was a great experience. I think the kids, I think it was great for the for the players just just because of that uh, the stadium is such a famous kind of thing and and it, it was it was a blast. Jake, when you look back on this year, in the coming years, what are the moments, the handful of moments that you're going to remember about this season? Uh, I think uh, one of the biggest moments and one of the biggest games was uh, playing against Minster because that was one of the tighter ones. And uh, just the, the MAC, battling in the MAC is always a lot of fun. And then, of course, uh, playing at Ohio State, I mean, it was just, it was a blast and seeing, uh, Seeing CJ score that last touchdown and rushing down there, uh, it was exciting. CJ, what are your snapshots from this season? Um, I would agree. With, there's there's like three different individual seasons, really. Like the first two games are non-conference, and then you got the MAC and playoffs. And the MAC is just that whole season is just so intense, and like you're just battling it out, and everyone, no one quits. Everyone just goes and plays to the whistle and plays hard. So uh, it's it's incredible. Coach, when you look at that schedule. Kenton, they made a deep playoff run. Bishop Harley made a deep playoff run. Obviously, we know how strong the MAC is week in and week out. How much of that schedule, how does that much of that toughen even a great team like the Coldwater teams? Uh, it, it, it certainly gets you ready. I guess the, the uh, fear is that, it, that it, can you stay healthy through all that. Um, you know, Kenton and uh, Kenton and uh, Harley are really physical teams. And then, you know, I, I, Brody got hurt, hurt, hurt in that uh, part of the season. And, but uh, you know, we relatively speaking, once we hit the playoffs, I think I think because of our numbers, we had really good numbers, and we had. I kept telling them, you know, we got 25, 30 guys playing, um, whether it's special teams and guys subbing in and, and rotating. So so it, it is a it is a I guess you call it grind, and and we came out of the into the playoffs relatively healthy. I know Mitch Fullenkamp, his knee is banged up right now, but relatively speaking, we stayed healthy because of those numbers, and man, we got on the roll and. And the kids felt good and fresh. We didn't really practice, um, you know, maybe an hour and a half at the max. We, we hit very little um, once we got in the playoffs. And so we kind of got on that roll. And, and uh, you know, but the max schedule certainly, you know, you get in the playoffs, you don't have to do anything different. You know, you, you just play your game and you don't have to make a miraculous, uh, you know, hope the other team, you know, doesn't play well and you play great. You, you, if, if we play well, then, then you got a good shot to win. Coach, speaking of Brody Hoying and Mitch Fullenkamp, the Division Five Offensive and Defensive Players of the Year, both under the weather, so they can't join us here today. But the leadership those two guys provided for this team, both offensively and defensively, what did that mean for this team? Well, Brody, Brody um, is, is, is really a two or three way leader. He, he's a he's a vocal vocal leader and is not afraid to jump jump on somebody and say, "Hey, let's get her going." Um, along, obviously, with the with the playmaking, so the so the role model. Um, you know, you know, we joke joke sometimes with the coaches like Brody will be on like the scout punt team and it's like should we let him really be out there but when your leader wants to be out there that just just shows the young guys uh, Mitch doesn't probably Mitch doesn't really say anything <laughs> to be honest with you a very very quiet guy his 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 leadership was more just just the the uh, work ethic and the um mostly in the games the effort you know playing defensive tackle getting double team triple team because everybody knows who he is and then you see him making plays, you know, 15 down, you know, a, a pass that he would make a tackle uh, 10 or 15 yards down the field. And, and, if he, and if he can play that hard, well, everybody else should be able to play that hard. And the Coldwater Cavaliers played hard enough to win the state title. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk with more of the Cats here on Bringing Home the Gold. Welcome back to Bringing Home the Gold, joined now by three more Cavalier players, Brandon Kunk, Derek Toby, Nick Clooney on the end. And Brandon, we'll start with you. What has this last week been like for the Cavaliers as you brought home once again the state title? 
definitely been exciting, I would say. Uh, a lot of support, a lot of random people that you don't even recognize saying congratulations, and it's been fun. You know, Derek, for a while, Coldwater had the reputation of being able to get to the state title game, but not quite win that state title game, playing in Division Five, playing some of the bigger schools in Division Five. You guys, it's this senior class and the class ahead of you and the class ahead of that, it's kind of changed that reputation for Coldwater with three straight state titles. Was that a conscious effort, or is that just kind of the way things played out? Um, I would say definitely it was probably just a conscious effort. You know, we didn't go into the game thinking we were going to lose. We always thought we were going to win, but at the end of the game, it just ended up not the way that we wanted to. Nick, what do you remember most about this season? Um, probably the state game because, like, I mean, it was last week, obviously, but um, <laughs> it was uh, it was just awesome being in the shoe, like, uh, with the lights glaring down, and it was just such a great atmosphere to be there. Did you notice that there was 100,000 empty seats? Not really, no, because, like, uh, the, most of the first deck was filled with uh, our fans and CCC's fans, so the atmosphere was still there, so you could hear fans screaming and yelling and all that. Yeah, I mean, attendance was, like, over 50% above what it was a year ago. Certainly, it seems as if it was a success moving into Columbus. Is that what, from a player's perspective, do you think it should stay in Columbus? Yeah, I definitely think it should stay in Columbus. It was awesome. You know, walking out of the tunnel, it was just like looking up at the press box and standing in the middle of the O, it was just un unbelievable. So, Brandon, obviously Coldwater has had some success at Ohio Stadium with the Homans and the other types of stuff. Did you guys talk to, to uh, Adam or Ross at all about what it's like to play at Ohio Stadium? Um, actually, we didn't get a hold of him. Maybe the coaches talked to him, but uh, we didn't get to talk to him before the game. So, we had a couple of guys, like um, Jeff Hardings was in, um, a couple other big name guys that were in and talked yeah, to Bob us. Bob Hoying was yeah. your honorary mm -hmm. captain. Mm -hmm. Fourteen and one. Does that one still bother you? The loss to Marion Local. I would say yes. It definitely sticks out. So, yeah, it sticks out a lot. So the, the one is overshadow overshadows the fourteen. Is that what you guys are telling me? Um, probably. <laughs> <laughs> the Mac is so good. What is it like playing in that league week in and week out? Uh, it's crazy, you know. You can't ever go into, the, into a game in the MAC and think you're going to win because every week it's, a, it's definitely a hard battle and any team can win. Nick, what was that bus ride like back from Columbus to Coldwater Saturday night, early Sunday morning? Uh, it was great. Everyone was just having a great time and uh, we played some songs on the radio. Everyone was singing along and it was, it was lots of fun. What snapshots are you going to take from this season? Um, definitely the state game. That was awesome. But, you know, the MAC and the two, and Hartley and Kent that we played the first two games, those were definitely really big games. Those, those were really fun games, too. All right, that's going to do it for us tonight on Bringing Home the Gold. I want to thank all of our guests from the Coldwater Cavaliers State Championship football team, three in a row for the Cavs. And I'm willing to bet they're already starting to think about making it four in a row next year. Until then, I'm Mark Mayer.